Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video about connectionism. And basically, I'm going to be explaining why I like connectionist models. Connectionism is a term which describes a way of modelling the mind as an emergent phenomenon involving interconnected networks of simple processing units. Looking at the underlying neurophysiology, the brains of animals appear to be connectionist networks, and so computers have been used to create synthetic neural networks. When synthesizing intelligence, using neural networks can have some advantages. They're the only model for machine intelligence where we have an existence proof that the model will actually scale up to a reasonable level of complexity. As such, they represent a conservative approach to constructing intelligent machines. Neural networks naturally exhibit phenomena such as learning, generalization, and pattern recognition. They can be trained to perform practically any task via a process involving reinforcement learning and they're good at taking advantage of massively parallel hardware. However, there are also some disadvantages. Using neural networks often results in designs which are inscrutable and incomprehensible to human engineers. This makes it challenging to maintain or repair an existing trained network. Another problem sometimes cited is the training method. Using a carrot and a stick to train your machine is a strategy which only works until the machine is big enough and clever enough to take away your stick and then take away all your carrots. A related issue is the wirehead problem. Neural networks operate by using a type of low-level reinforcement learning, and such algorithms are sometimes thought to be prone to wireheading behaviour. Further issues include reliability and safety. A neural network is challenging to understand, and its resulting behaviour is hard to predict. So its outcomes cannot be proven to have any desirable properties. The provably correct software movement advocates that we use designs which we can prove theorems about when building safety-critical applications. Lastly, neural networks perform extremely poorly on the largely serial machines that are popular today. We'd need radically different hardware to make them useful. Given these virtues and faults, what will be the significance of neural networks? My position is that connectionism will probably prove to be a very important technology on the road to machine intelligence. It's true that neural networks often produce opaque and inscrutable solutions which are challenging for human engineers to understand. However, they are, they are not the only type of optimization technique with this property. For example, a common complaint about genetic programming is that it produces solutions which are incomprehensible to humans and therefore hard to maintain. Part of the reason machines generate code which humans can't understand is because they're not trying to produce such code in the first place. So, one solution is to inter include terms in the fitness function, or the quitic in the case of a machine learning algorithm, that favour the production of comprehensible and maintainable code. Another possibility is to forget about readability of the code in the eyes of humans and use machine engineers to maintain the code. You'd still probably want the code to be modular and maintainable, though. As for the idea that a sufficiently smart machine will eventually learn to take away the trainer's stick, one thing to note is that you can build some pretty smart machines before that becomes an issue. You could easily automate the retail, manufacturing, distribution and agricultural industries before this sort of thing became a problem. It's hardly a factor of preventing current progress. Another thing to note is that the trainers don't have to be human beings. They too could be machines. So long as the machine being trained is not a lot smarter than its trainers, then they can still teach it, provided there are enough of them and they are sufficiently well equipped. So I figure this issue is unlikely to be a big problem. The wirehead problem is somewhat similar. Um, you can do a great deal before it becomes an issue. It seems too far off for practical concerns about it at this stage. Any requirement for provably correct solutions for security critical domains seems like a challenging one for a neural network based solution to meet. However, provably correct solutions currently have very limited penetration into most markets, and it seems extremely unlikely that they will be used by practical machine intelligence projects anytime soon. Some people maintain that machine intelligence is an area where security is critical, but this seems to be patently false to me. In most cases, good enough will be just fine, so I expect provable correctness to be an irrelevant consideration, one pursued mainly by the most paranoid researchers. Other approaches, such as inductive programming and working from specification languages, allow the goal of the agent to be specified in advance, rather than having it deduced by a reinforcement learning mechanism. That might seem like a desirable thing to do, but I think in practice it is, less like, it is likely to work less well. 
letting the agent deduce its goal from reward signals is actually a positive feature. It means you don't have to understand the agent's representation of the world for it to learn and make developmental progress, and that's good. I don't think neural networks are necessarily the final form of machine intelligence. Once machines are smart enough to reprogram themselves, they may come up with other types of architecture that are superior. Also, sophisticated machines are likely to have a heterogeneous architecture with some dedicated high-speed serial processors that are unlikely to have a connectionist architecture in addition to their massively parallel processing elements. However, I do think that synthetic neural networks are likely to play an important role in the early days of the development of machine intelligence. The way I picture things, you need a primitive technology to help intelligence get off the ground. Animals use such primitive technology, and the simplest and most obvious thing to do is to crib from their solution and use a similar technology. Once we have intelligent machines, they can revisit the problem and see if they can find a more radical architecture that's superior. However, attempting to go straight for such solutions ourselves has a fair chance of not working at all, or it might take a very long time. It would be rather like trying to build a helicopter before we had built a glider. That is not to say that we should not invest in other ideas at all, just that it makes considerable sense to focus the resources that we have available on connectionist approaches. Um, enjoy.